Bedtime Stories for Giants. If you like these stories and want to follow along on the Giants' adventures, please hit the subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like this video. I hope you enjoy the story. Tell me a giant story. Before we jump into the Giants' exciting adventure, I want to make sure you're comfortable in your bed. Not too hot and you're not too cold and your comforter is just right. Your head is resting on your pillow and your body is relaxed. Your eyes are closed, not too tight. Take a breath in through your nose. Slowly let it out through your mouth, taking another breath in through your nose, and slowly, gently out through your mouth. The four giant children had spent the morning building a tree fort. Luna was the oldest of the giant siblings. Next oldest was her brother Bo. The third oldest was Apple Peach Banana. The youngest was named Ernie. All four giants decided it was time to take a break. Luna and Bo were fetching water, and Apple Peach Banana and Ernie were resting by the tree. When all of a sudden, out of the corner of Apple Peach Banana's eye, she saw a squirrel skittering by, and at the sight of the squirrel, got re-energized and curious where the squirrel was headed. Apple Peach Banana nudged Ernie and said, Look, Ernie, a squirrel. Let's see where it goes and we'll follow it. Ernie rubbed his eyes and stretched his arms. Okay, he said. Ernie held his older sister's hand as she followed the squirrel. The two giants followed the squirrel, zigzagging through the trees, going up hills and down hills. The squirrel skidded along so fast, coming to a white framed mirror lying on the grass. When it got to the white frame, it hopped over it and disappeared. Apple Peach Banana and Ernie were confused. Apple Peach Banana said, Must be some sort of magic trick. They walked over to the mirror. She looked through it and saw herself looking back. She touched the white frame of the mirror. She ran her fingers to where the mirror was. But she didn't feel a mirror there. It was just open air. She was able to to reach through the mirror. She looked at her brother Ernie, nodded her head, and dipped her toes in through the mirror. Then, her foot. Then she jumped up and went through, pulling Ernie along. They were falling, falling, falling down, but not falling fast. They were falling in slow motion almost more of a float. Unbeknownst to them, Luna and Bo were following them. When they saw Ernie and Apple Peach Banana go through the mirror, they had to follow. Their job was to keep their younger siblings safe. Apple Peach Banana and Ernie looked up and saw Luna and Bo tumbling in slow motion above them. They slowly, gently floated down and finally landed on some soft ground. In front of them, they saw a table, and on the table were tiny, tiny little cakes. And written in icing on top of each cake said the words, Eat me. Luna looked at Bo, looked at Apple Peach Banana and Ernie, and asked, what do you think? Should we eat them? But when she looked at Ernie, he was already eating a cake. 
What happened to him? Well, he began to shrink, smaller and smaller, until he was the perfect size for the chair sitting at that table. They must be shrink cakes, Apple Peach Banana offered. Should I eat mine? Luna looked at Bo and Apple Peach Banana and said, Meh, can't hurt. So they all ate their own cakes. And they all got smaller. They all fit in this world here perfectly. That's when Apple Peach Banana saw the squirrel again. She pointed to the squirrel and said, Wait for us! We're coming for you! She ran off, followed by Luna, Bo, and Ernie. This startled the squirrel. He didn't know what to do. He stood still, hoping they weren't talking about him. But they were. An apple peach banana reached right where the squirrel was sitting. She got down all the way on the ground and leaned on her elbows face to face with the squirrel. She said, Hi, squirrel. The squirrel looked Apple Peach Banana dead in the eyes and said, My name's Rocco. I live here in the Wonderland Woods. Please don't eat me. Apple Peach Banana looked at Rocco and said, My name's Apple Peach Banana. I would never eat you. I was just following you because I was wondering where you were going. Rocco told Apple Peach Banana and Luna and Bo and Ernie about where he was going. Well, tomorrow is my birthday, and I really, really, really want my birthday to come. But the King of Wonderland was cleaning his clock, and he lost all the clock pieces. And I think I'm going to go and get a new one. It's standing still. At this rate, it'll never be my birthday. Apple Peach Banana knew exactly where Rocco was coming from. Where she was from, time didn't stop. It wasn't standing still, but it still felt like it was forever until she got to have her birthday. Apple Peach Banana asked Rocco, Do you think maybe we could help find the missing pieces for the king's clock? Yes! Please help me find all the pieces so it can finally be my birthday. Rocco said. Luna said, We'd love to help, but... Where do we even start? King Kronos told me he washed the numbers from the clock and hung them up to dry, but can't remember where he hung them. We'll have to search all over Wonderland to find them. Right, said Bo. But I forget, how many numbers are on a clock again? I don't know about where you're from, but here in Wonderland... There's 12 numbers on the clock. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, Luna said. There's 12 numbers on our clock where we're from, too. Let's start searching. The four giants and Rocco were in the middle of the woods. It was hard to see too much because there were so many trees. They walked and walked. It felt like forever, and they were starting to get hungry. This didn't deter them. They continued to search for the missing numbers. Eventually, Ernie's little legs were beginning to tire. He was starting to slow down, and therefore slowing everyone else down. He need to take a break. Ernie said. Luna, Bo, and Apple Peach Banana agreed. It was time to take a break. Luna said, I saw some raspberries over there. Ernie, you can rest right here with Apple Peach Banana. Bo and I will gather up some berries for a quick snack. Apple Peach Banana sat on the ground. Ernie laid down next to her, while Luna and Bo went around the corner to search for the berry bushes again. It didn't take Bo and Luna long to gather up the berries and come back. They shared their berries with their siblings and even gave Rocco a few. Yummy! Luna asked Ernie, Ernie, 
Do you feel well rested now? Ernie responded. Yeah, I do. But what's that up in the tree? Is that edible? Can we eat that? Luna, Bo, Apple Peach Banana, and Rocco all looked up. Dad Soaps, the King's Court numbers. Sure enough, right there above their heads in the willow tree were the king's clock numbers. Luna said, We would grab them, but ever since we ate those cakes, we're too short. We can't reach up that high anymore. Don't you worry. I'll skedaddle up the tree, knock the letters down, and you can catch them here on the ground. And that's just what Rocco did. He climbed up the tree and started dropping the clock numbers. First, Rocco dropped number 12. I caught it, Luna said. Next, Rocco dropped number 11. Then number 10. Number 9. Number 8. Number 7. Number 6. Number 5. Number 4. Number 3. Number 2. And finally, Rocco dropped number 1. We did it! We got all of King Kronos's clock numbers out of the tree. Now, all we have left to find are the clock hands and the clock cuckoo bird. The four giants held three numbers each. Luna looked up at Rocco in the tree and asked, Where do you suppose the clock hands would be? Well, King Kronos was washing the clock pieces at the lake. We could check there. Ernie said, Okay, let's go, and started walking. Then he said, Wait a second. I don't know where the lake is. Oh, I'll show you where it is. Follow me. First, we'll get to the river, and follow that all the way to the lake. With their clock numbers in tow, Luna, Bo, Apple Peach Banana, and Ernie followed Rocco. It didn't take long to find the river, and once they got to the river, they walked downstream to find the lake. They started to see some odd things in Wonderland. There were black flowers the size of dinner plates. Rocco told the giant children they were carnivorous plants. They ate insects. Just as Rocco had finished telling the giants that, one of the flowers opened up wide an insect landed inside and chomp! It chomped the insect right up. Ernie and Apple Peach Banana saw this and distanced themselves further away from these black flowers. They were also walking on a rainbow of colored rocks. The rocks that were underneath their feet were all the colors of the rainbow. They were see through too and sparkly. It was red orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet rocks underneath their feet. It was so hard not to pick every single one of them up. They were so neat. Luna and Apple Peach Banana wanted to take them all home for their rock collection, but figured their hands were already pretty full of clock numbers. They also saw upside down trees. For the bottom of the tree, like the top of the tree, and the top of the tree had roots coming out into the sky. One of the strangest things they saw was a bird that looked like a raccoon flying. Seeing all these interesting sights made the time pass quickly, except for the time wasn't actually passing at all. No time had gone by since the giants had entered Wonderland. They finally made it to the lake. Search the beach for the missing clock hands. 
Luna said, good idea, and they began searching the beach, up and down. It was very distracting because just like the rocks they had already walked on, the beach sand was just as beautiful. Bo got sick of looking for the clock hands on the beach. He decided to sit in the shade on the beach and watch the lake. All of a sudden, he could see fish jumping. Strange fish. Almost tropical looking fish were jumping out of the lake. He was enjoying this fish jumping show. Then he noticed one of the fish had strange looking fins. They didn't look like fish fins. He had to stand up and squint his eyes to get a clearer view of what he was really looking at. Then it hit him like a ton of bricks. That fish didn't have fins. It had clock hands. Hey, fish, hand over those clock hands, he yelled. The fish shook his head and said, come and get them. Bo hollered out to his siblings, Hey, guys, that fish has the clock hands. Luna asked, How are we supposed to get those back? Rocco had a plan. See that purple seaweed over there? If you eat that purple seaweed, you'll be able to breathe underwater for as long as the seaweed is in your digestive system. There'll be plenty of time to catch that fish and grab the clock hands back. Luna said, okay, and grabbed a handful of the purple seaweed, shoving it in her mouth, eating it. Boa looked at Luna and asked, how does it taste? And Luna said, mm, kind of like wet lettuce and salt. Here, have a handful. Bo took a handful of the purple seaweed and ate it right up. Apple, peach, banana, and Ernie didn't want to be left out of swimming with the fish. They also grabbed handfuls of the purple seaweed and gobbled it right down. All holding hands except for Rocco, they entered the water. They kept their feet on the sand and walked down, down, down until their heads were covered with water. Rocco was right. They could breathe underwater. But they couldn't talk to each other under the water. They had to use hand gestures to get their points across. Bo pointed in the direction he thought the fish with the clock hands had swam. This time, they didn't split up though. They stuck together. Finally, when they looked up, they saw a red fish with clock hands as fins. The fish hadn't seen them yet, so they were able to sneak up from underneath the fish and grab him. Bo had the fish with his arms and swam him up to the surface of the water, followed by Luna, Apple Peach Banana, and Ernie. When they got to the top of the water, Bo looked at the fish and said, Why do you have the clock hands? Why are you not giving them back? The fish looked at the four giants and explained to them how he had fins and he didn't want fins, he wanted hands. When he saw King Kronos cleaning his clock pieces at the lake, he took this chance and grabbed the hands so he would know what it felt like to have hands. Apple Peach Banana shook her head at the fish. But those aren't like real hands, not like our hands. Those are just clock hands and we need them back. What do you mean they're not real hands? The fish asked. Apple Peach Banana explained that those don't have fingers that bend. They're just stuck straight. The fish looked at Apple Peach Banana's hands and Ernie's hands and Bo's hands and Luna's hands. And then he looked at the clock hands again and said, I guess you're right. I still don't know what it's like to have hands. Here, you can have these back. He reached out his fin and handed the clock hands, one to Bo and one to Luna. Luna said, oh, thank you. This will help us tremendously. The four giants waved goodbye to the fish and took this chance to swim all the way back to shore underwater because they still had the ability to breathe under the water. 
Rocco was jumping up and down on the shore with excitement when the children came back. Now, all we have left to find is a little cuckoo bird. Where could it be? Ernie sat down again on the beach, put his hands on his chin and rested his elbows on his knees. This is too hard. I give up, he said. But you can't give up. I want my birthday to come. I want the clock to work. I want time to keep going. I don't want time to be stopped. Please, Ernie, please help me. Help me get to my birthday. Rocco's words tugged at Ernie's heartstrings. Of course he couldn't say no to a squirrel having his birthday party. He said, okay. I just, it's just so hard. I don't know where to look. As Ernie was getting frustrated on the beach, Apple Peach Banana was looking up high and watching the birds fly by. Then she looked at Rocco and asked, Do you suppose the cuckoo bird is flying? The bird can't fly. It's made of wood. All it does is pop out of the cuckoo clock saying, Cuckoo, cuckoo, at every hour. When Rocco said cuckoo, it attracted birds to him. The birds were trying to pick Rocco up with their talons. Rocco was fighting back. I'm not a cuckoo bird! I'm not a cuckoo bird! But Luna could see what was happening. She told Rocco, Rocco, stay calm. I think they think you're a bird. Like they thought the cuckoo bird was a bird. Just Stay relaxed and let them take you to their nest. Maybe they'll take you right to where they took the cuckoo bird. And we'll be right behind you. We'll follow you. I promise. Rocco finally understood. He then relaxed himself and let the birds pick him up with their talons. They took off. But Rocco was keeping his eyes on the ground. And the giant children were keeping their eyes in the sky. They followed the birds carrying Rocco to a nest. And when they got to the bottom of the tree, they could hear Rocco shouting down. The cuckoo bird! The cuckoo bird! The cuckoo bird is up here in the nest! Rocco grabbed the cuckoo bird and began climbing down the tree. The giant children met him at the bottom. They couldn't wait to see what the cuckoo bird for the clock looked like. It was very simple. It was a very simple wood-carved bird with red wings and a soft yellow painted beak. We have to get the lost clock items back to King Kronos so we can put the clock back together. Follow me. I'll take you to the king's castle. The four giant children followed Rocco to the castle. As they got closer, they could see all the magnificent details the castle had. Wonderland Castle was carved into the side of a mountain. It was beautiful. It reminded the giant children a little bit of their home on the side of their mountain. But the scale of this castle, the magnificent details, the carvings, the sculptures, that was something to see. They got closer and closer and began feeling a bit nervous. What would King Kronos be like? Would he be nice? Would he be grumpy? Would he be too busy of a king to meet with four kids? Rocco knocked when they arrived at the castle's door. Who be there? They heard. The voice was pretty intimidating and they hoped this wasn't the king. It is I, King Kronos, Rocco, and four warriors. We have been on a quest to find your missing clock pieces. We have returned with all of them. You may enter, King Chrono said as the massive castle doors began to open slowly. Don't be scared. King Chrono is actually very nice and obviously a bit forgetful. The giant children gained a bit of courage from having Rocco with them. As they entered the castle, 
they saw the king sitting on a throne right in front of them. The king looked pleased to see they were holding all the missing clock pieces. He had his servants gather them and bring them to him. Thank you. Please, feel free to rest in one of the corridors. It may take me a while to get the clock put back together. The four giant children and Rocco began to explore the castle. They quickly found a room that was suitable to rest in. It was perfect. It had four beds for the four children and a dollhouse with a perfect squirrel-sized bed in it. They each chose a different bed and laid down. Before they could even utter any words, they were fast asleep. This is where we will leave the giant children for tonight, sleeping in the castle in Wonderland. You'll have to come back next week to find out if the king can fix his cuckoo clock, if Rocco has a birthday party, and to find out if the giant children ever make it home. The end. For now, good night, giants.